for the day is the forerunner by Khalil Gibran his parables and poems thank you to all those who have subscribed to my channel and watching my videos regularly for those who haven't my request is please do check out my videos and if you like them subscribe and share it with your contacts right let's get into the topic the forerunners by Khalil Gibran his parables and poems an enlightened soul like Khalil Gibran could call everybody a forerunner and calling the self to be the foundation is truth. A child can talk about the sunrise and the shadows. Here Gibran talks to my own forerunner for the long shadow stretching before me at sunrise shall gather under my feet at the noon hour Yet another sunrise shall lay another shadow before me, and that also shall be gathered at another noon. True it is that always we have been our own foreigners, and we always shall be. True it is that we are the field, we are the plowmen, we are the gatherers, and we are gathered. The uh, poetic mind can talk about timeless dreams. Only an enlightened soul can talk about the silence. The parables of you are a sun in his right hand and I am earth in his left hand is something scientists can never think upon. The sun and earth are but the beginning of a greater sun and a greater earth and always shall we be the beginning. You are your own forerunner. You, the stranger passing by the gate of the, my garden, and I too am my own forerunner, though I sit in the shadows of my trees and seem motionless. Often we compare in our life with others and lose our uniqueness, forget that we are a masterpiece. Only a genius like Gibran Khalil Gibran can remind us of these things. In the poem, Love. He brings out the thing that we are all creators of this earth, mother earth, universe. He says, they say the jackal and mole drink from the same stream where the lion comes to drink. And they say the eagle and the vulture dig the breaks, digs into the same caracas and are at peace with one another in the presence of the dead thing. Think over the differences we lay among ourselves. Love, whose lordly hand had riddled my desires and raised my hunger and my thirst to dignity and pride, let not the strong in me and the constant eat the bread or drink the wine, they tempt my weaker self, let me rather starve and let my heart parch with thirst and let me die and perish ere I stretch my hand to a cup you did not fill. Or a bowl you did not bless. Brings out that the strength and the weakness in our own self that we see is an illusion. He connects the desires, dignity and pride, and the hunger, bread and wine, the starvation and thirst and death. And he says, finally, to a cup you did not fill, or a bowl you did not bless. First to the supreme power here not somebody like the way he brings out the characterization of the saint in his poem, The Saint. One visits a saint and says, O oh saint, I would be comforted, my sins are heavy upon me. And the saint replied, my sins too are heavy upon me. And the brigand said, but I am a thief and a plunderer. And the saint replied, I too am a thief and a plunderer. And the brigand said, but I am a murderer 
and the blood of my men cries cries in my ear and the saint replied i too am a murderer and in my eyes cries the blood of many men the brigand said i have committed countless crimes saint repeated the same thing stared at the saint and started going down the hill skipping down the hill and turned to the saint and said wherefore did you accuse yourself of uncommitted crimes see you not that this man went away no longer believing in you the reply from the saint this was so touching the saint answered it is true he no longer believes in me but he went away much comforted greatest of the joy is to make someone happy in your life and that's what the saint did at that moment we heard the brigand singing the distance and echo of his song filled the valley with gladness spread the gladness spread the love and the other parable other seas in which a fish said to another fish above the sea of ours there is another sea with creatures swimming in it and they live there even as we live here the fish replied pure fancy pure fancy when you know that everything that lives our sea by even an inch and stays out of it dies what proof have you of other lives in other seas this is how we are talking about the heaven and the hell even after death after life all these beliefs you know has been brought through this parable okay. he brings the values out of a story once a man unearthed in his field a marble statue of great beauty then he gives it to a statue collector and uh, offers for sale takes the money and parts and this man thinks how can anyone give all this for a dead card stone buried and undreamed yet for thousands of years and the collector thinks how can what life the dream of what a soul and someone is giving all this for money dead and dreamless so every one of us value different things and what is valuable for you may not be for others for some it is money for some others it is the priceless tradition you had a good time listening to the parables and poems of the forerunner by gibran khalil gibran hope to see you with another set of similar videos in the future if you have any kind of opinion please record it in the comment section and i'll be more than happy to read them and respond to them thank you for watching have a good day bye bye be the forerunner Welcome to Ofrop YouTube channel. Your world for information. Hi all, how are you? I am your Ark. and the topic is khalil gibran's the prophet khalil gibran's prophet is a treasure trove and it's a must read for anyone who is interested in spiritual and philosophy 26 prose poetry fables brings a lot of connections of the human and the lifestyle the very first sentence of the book is al mustafa the chosen and the beloved it brings a lot what is there in the book mustafa waits for 12 years in the city of our place for a ship and uh, he wants to return to his isle of birth 12th year in the month of reaping when he climbed on the hills without the city walls and look see what he could see his ship coming amongst the mists every sentence in this book is a must read 
So then it starts. Then the gates of his heart were flung open, and his joy flew far over the sea. And he closed his eyes and prayed, prayed in the silences of his soul. The sil sil and suddenly a sadness catches upon him. But natural for any human, also natural for the chosen one, the beloved one, Al Mustafa. Can he leave the city without a wound in his spirit? How many nights of aloneness he has spent in this city? Who can we depart without piece of pain and without regret? Aptly described by the author as too many fragments of the spirit have I scattered in these streets. Al Mustafa is intertwined with the city. He is explained with the words. I cannot withdraw from. Uh, it is not a garment I cast off this day, but a skin that I tear with my own hands. It is not similar to a garment, but it is more like a skin which he has to peel off. The philosophical touch, the sea that call all things unto her calls me, and I must embark. Explain thus. The voice cannot carry the tongue and the lips that gave it wings. Just the foot of the hill finds the ship approaching the harbor. See the countryman, his own countryman. The narration of attachment begins. Cried out to him and he said, Sons of my ancient mother, you riders of the tides, how often have you sailed in my dreams and now you have come in my awakening. It is my deep dream. Ready am I to go, and my eagerness with sails full set awaits the wind. Only another breath will I breathe in this still air. Only another loving look cast backward, and then I stand among you, a seafarer among seafarers, and you, vast sea sleeping mother, who alone are peace and freedom to the river and the stream. Only another winding will this stream make. Only another murmur in this glad, and then I shall come to you, a boundless drop to a boundless ocean. First, the gladness of seeing the ship, then the pain of parting, again the gladness of seeing men of his country, and then again the parting comes again. Finds men and women leave the vineyard, voices calling his name to himself. Shall the day of parting be the day of gathering? And it shall be said that my ye was in truth my dawn. And what shall I give unto him who has left his plough in mid furrow, or to him who has stopped the wheel of his wine press? Shall my heart become a tree heavy laden with fruit, that I may gather and give unto them? And shall my desires flow like a fountain, that I may fill their cups? Am I a harp that the hand of the mighty may touch me? Or a flute of his breath may pass through me. A seeker of silence am I, and what treasures in the silences that I may dispense with confidence. This is, if this is my day of harvest, in which fields I have sown the seeds, and in what unremembered season, if this indeed be the hour in which I lift up my lantern, it's not my flame that burned therein. Empty and dark shall I raise my lantern. And the guardian of the night shall fill it with oil, and he shall light it also. Things he said in words, but much in his heart remained unsaid, for he himself could not speak his deep, deeper secret. Silence and darkness are testimony for a man. The true spirit of a man comes in silence and darkness. The alternating mixed bag of feelings, joy and the sorrow continues. When he entered into the city, all the people came to meet him. And they were crying out to him as with one voice. And the elders of the city stood forth and said, Go not away from us, a noontide have you been in the twilight, and your youth has given us dreams to dream. It was the attachment of Al Mustafa to that city. He has made a difference in their lives. Danger are you among us, nor a guest, but our son and our dearly beloved. Suffer not yet our eyes to hunger for your face. And the priest and the priestess said to him, Let not the waves of sea separate us now, and the years you have spent in the midst become a memory. You have walked among us a spirit, and your shadow 
has been a light upon our faces. Much have we loved you, but speechless was our love, and with wheels it has been wheeled. With cries aloud unto you, and would stand revealed before you, and ever it has been that love moves for not its own death until the hour of separation. And others came also and entreated him, but he answered them not. He just bent his head, and his face. Tears fell on his breast. He proceeded towards the great square. There came a woman. The author describes her as came out of the sanctuary, a woman whose name was Almitra, and she was a seeress. And he looked upon her with exceeding tenderness, for it was she who had first sought and believed in him when he had been but a day in their city. Him saying, O prophet of God, in quest of the uttermost, long have you searched the distances for your ship, and now your ship has come, and you must need go. Deep is for your longing for the land of your memories, and the dwelling place of your greater desires, and our love would not bind you, nor our needs hold you. Yet we are asked here to leave us, that you speak to us, and give us of your truth. She wants a piece of wisdom from this man. For this man is not an ordinary man. He is a bellowed one. He is a chosen one. She continues, And we will give it unto our children, and they unto their children, and it shall not perish. In your aloneness you have watched with our, and in your wakefulness you have listened to the weeping and laughter of our sleep. Now therefore disclose us to ourselves and tell us that has been shown you of that which is between birth and death. Nice, the author brings out the sadness and the gladness alternatingly. He, the attachment of him to the city and the longing for him to go back to his country. The unity of the people of the town and the influence he has made in their lives and his longing to go back to his country and the parting pain in both the countrymen as well as even the beloved Mustafa Al Mustafa. After all these events, the Prophet Al Mustafa starts a speech for the parting speech for the countrymen, in which he is going to reveal a lot of truth, a lot of truth that he has learned over the years and a lot of truth, uh, wisdom that the life has given him. He is going to share it with the people who have shared so much with him in the past. What rules here, whether it's the wisdom or is it the emotions? Let's hear the speech of the great Al-Mustafa. <laughs> Khalil Gibran's The Madman, his parables and poems. The parables in The Madman brings out the, it's a revelation, it's a revelation of some things in life. And Khalil Gibran brings out a sane man in The Madman. As the Madman explains how he became a madman. It starts this, one day, long before my gods were born, I woke from a deep sleep and found all my masks were stolen. The seven masks I fashioned and worn in seven lives. And maskless through the crowded street, shouting thieves, thieves, and curved thieves. Just thieves started running helter skelter, and one youth said, He's a madman. 
then i decided i'll have to be mad and no more masks the trans he cries blessed blessed of the thieves who stole my masks this madman found freedom and safety in his madness the freedom of loneliness and free- safety from being understood and for those who understand enslave something in us so it is a blessing to be a madman the parables my friend is uh, structured in such a way that somebody explains about himself to his friend he said my friend i am not what i seem the i in me my friend dwells in the house of silence and therein it remains forever ever more unperceived unapproachable so he calls his thoughts as sounds and uh, his deeds as hopes in action and he would never believe in what he himself says or trust what he himself does this a deeper meaning when he says i would be at sea alone deeper meaning is created when i said when he says and i love my hell too well to have be visited i would be in hell alone Once again he reiterates it yet i would have the see my laughter i would laugh alone i'm mad but i mask my madness i would be mad alone he says to his imaginary friend that my path is not the path yet together we walk hand in hand and only a madman can do this only a madman can see himself from outside his own deeds and actions from an outside perspective and who would not like the kind of subtle irony that he brings in relationship through his parables the sleepwalkers a mother and a daughter had a sleepwalking habit in the night while sleepwalking the mother told at last at last my enemy you by whom my youth was destroyed you have built up your life upon the ruins of mine would i could kill you sleepwalker daughter replied o oh, hateful woman selfish and old who stand between my freer self and me who would have my life an echo of your own faded life would you were dead the morning they woke up and the mom said gently is that you darling and the daughter gently replied yes dear so nicely does he bring the varying self in the parables the seven selves the self said i have dwelt all these years with not to do but renew his pain day by day and recreate his sorrow by night i can bear my fate no longer and now i rebel the second self said yours is better than mine brother for it is given to me to be the madman's joyous self i laugh his laughter and sing his happy hours and thrice ring feet i dance his brighter thoughts it is i that would rebel against my very existence third self said and what of me the love ridden self the flaming brand of wild passion and fantastic desires it is the i the love sick self would rebel against this madman fourth self i amongst you all i am the most miserable for not was given to me but odious hatred and destructive loathing it is i the tempter like self the one born in the black caves of hell who would protest against serving this madman self said nay it is i the thinking self the fanciful self the self of hunger and thirst the one doomed to wander without rest in search of unknown things and things not yet created it is i not you who would rebel self six self added and i the working self the pitiful laborer who without patient hands and longing eyes fashion the days into images and give the formless elements new and eternal forms that is i the solitary one who would rebel against this restless madman finally the seventh self started discoursing saying how strange that you all would rebel against this man because each and every one of you has a preordered fate to fulfill uh, but i could be like one of you a self with determined lot but i have none i am the do nothing self the one who sits in the dumb empty nowhere and no when while you are busy recreating life is that you or i neighbors who should rebel
Seven selves had no answer to the seventh self. All other senses went to sleep, but the seventh self remained watching and gazing at nothingness which is behind all things. Is there any of your senses or self troubling with you? Nicely does he bring the desires and wish in the parables the fox. The fox looked at his shadow at sunrise and said, I will have a camel for lunch today. And all morning he went about looking for camels, but at noon he saw his shadow again and he said, a mouse will do. The revelation on the good God and the evil God is fascinating. The good God and the evil God met on the mountain top. The good God said, good to you, good to you. The, the evil God made no answer and the good God said, you are in bad humor today. Yes, said the evil God, for the late of may often mistaken for you, called by your name and treated if I were you, it ill pleases me. The good God said, but I too have mistaken for you and called by your name. The evil God walked away, cursing the stupidity of man. Is there something called good God and evil God? Please record your opinion in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed the parables and poems of the madman by Khalil Gibran. Hope to see you with similar video in the future. Take care till then. It's Ark signing off. Bye. Welcome to Aircraft's YouTube channel, your world for information. How are you? The topic for the day is Khalil Gibran's prophet and we are going to see the prophet's words of wisdom on love, marriage, children, wealth and the art of giving. To all those who have subscribed to my videos, to my channel and are watching my videos and a quick request to others who haven't, please check out my videos and if you like them, subscribe and share. Right, let's get into the topic mastered sorted this sermon people of our place of what can i speak save of that which is even now moving within your souls then said almitra speak us to of love and the master speaking about love he raised his head and looked upon the people and there fell a stillness upon them in his great voice said when love beckons to you follow him though his ways are hard and steep and when his Wings enfold you, yield to him. Though the sword hidden among his pinions may wound you, he speaks to you. Believe in him. Though his voice may shatter your dreams as the north winds lay waste the garden. For even as love crowns to you, so shall he crucify you. Even as he is for your growth, so is he for your pruning. Even as he ascends to your height, and caresses your tenderest branches that quiver in the sun, so shall he descend to your roots and shake them in the clinging to the earth. Pass out of love's threshing floor into the seasonless world where you shall laugh, but not all your laughter and weep, but not all your of your tears. Love gives not but itself and takes not but from itself. Love possesses nor would it be possessed. For love is sufficient unto love. When you love that you should not say God is my heart, but rather I am in the heart of God. And think not you can direct the course of love, for love, if it finds your worthy, directs your course. Love has no desire but to fulfill itself. If you love and must needs have desires, let these be your desires, to melt and be like a running brook that sings its melodies to the night to know the pain of too much tenderness, to be wounded by your own understanding of love and to 
bleed willingly and joyfully to wake at dawn with a winged heart and give thanks for another day of loving to rest at noon hour and meditate love's ecstasy to return home at every time with gratitude and then to sleep with a prayer for the beloved in your heart and a song of praise upon your lips what an explanation of love al mustafa is truly a master mitra asked about marriage and the master begins you are born together and together you shall be for ever more you shall be together when the white wings of death scatter your days a hey, you shall be together even in the silent memory of god but let there be space in your togetherness statement is this let there be spaces in your togetherness not many can think about this space in togetherness let the winds of the heavy heavens dance between you love one another but need not make a bond of love rather it be a moving sea between the shores of your soul till each other's cup but drink not from one cup give one another of your bread but not eat of the same loaf sing and dance together and be joyous but let each one of you be alone as the strings of a lute are alone so they acquire with the same music give your hearts but not into each other's keeping for only hand of life can contain your hearts and stand together yet not too near together for the pillars of the temple stands apart and the oak tree and the cypress grow not in each other's shadow the speech on love and marriage a woman wanted wisdom on is wisdom on children and the prophet replied children are not your children they are the sons and daughters of life longing for itself they came through to you but not from you and though they are with you yet they belong not to you you may give them your love but not your thoughts for they have their own thoughts you may house their bodies but not their souls for their souls dwell in the house of tomorrow which you can visit which you cannot visit not even in your dreams you may strive to be like them but not seek to make them like you life goes not backward not terrace with yesterday you are the bows from which your children as living arrows are sent forth archer sees the mark upon the path of the infinite and he bends you with his might that the arrows may go swift and far let your bending in the archer's hand be for gladness for even as he loves the arrow that flies so he loves also the bow that is stable his wisdom on love marriage and children a rich man wanted to know his thoughts about wealth prophet replied you give but little when you give of your possessions it is when you give of yourself that you truly give for your possessions but things you keep and guard for fear you may need them tomorrow and tomorrow what shall tomorrow bring to the world to the dog burying bones in the trackless sand as he follows the pilgrims to the holy city and what is the fear of need but need itself is not dread of thirst when you your well is full the thirst is unquenchable there are those who give little of the much which they have and they give it for recognition and their hidden desire makes it give a noulsome there are those who give have little and give it all these are believers in life and the bounty of life and their coffer is never empty to give joy and joy is their reward and there are those who give with pain and the pain is their baptism and there are those who give and no not pain in giving nor do they seek seek joy nor give with mindfulness of virtue yonder valley the little bricks in fragments into space through the hands of such as the god speaks and from behind their eyes he smiles upon the earth it is well to give when asked but it is better to give when asked through understanding and to open the open handed the search for one who shall receive its joy greater than giving and there is all you would be told all you have shall some day be given now that the season of giving may be yours and not your inheritors say i would give but only to the deserving the trees in your orchard say not so nor the flocks in your pasture that they may live for to withhold is to perish 
surely he who is not worthy to receive his days is worthy of all else from you and he who deserves to drink from the ocean of life deserves to fill his cup from your little stream but greater shall that be than which lies in the courage and confidence my charity of receiving and who are you that men should read rend their bosom and unveil their pride that you may see their worth naked and their pride unabashed you see first that you deserve to yourself deserve to be a giver and an instrument of giving truth it is life that gives to unto life while you who deem yourself as a giver are but a witness and you are receivers and you are all receivers as you know weight of gratitude lest you lay a yoke upon yourself and upon him who gives together with the giver on his gifts on his wings for to be over mindful that is to doubt his generosity who has a free heart and yet for mother and god for father the master shared his wisdom on love marriage children and giving of wealth to the people whom he was bonded with for more than 12 years and even during the parting it was not an emotional speech it was a piece of mind mind of wisdom that was shared with the people and not the emotions emotions were controlled by the wisdom Welcome to Ofrop YouTube channel. Your world for information. How are you? The topic for the day is Khalil Gibran's Sand and Foam. Khalil Gibran needs no introduction and this book Sand and Foam is a philosophical treasure. A kind request to check out all my videos. If you like them, subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends. Sand and Foam. I am forever walking up the shores with the sand and the foam. The high tide will erase my footprints. and the will will go away the foam but the sea and shore will remain forever once i filled my hand with mist then i opened it and lo the mist was a warm and i closed and opened my hand again and behold there was a bird and again i closed and opened my hand and it hollow stood a man with a sad face turned upward and again i closed my hand and when i opened it there was not but mist but i heard a song of exceeding sweetness it was but yesterday i thought myself a fragment wearing without rhythm in the sphere of life now i know that time the sphere and all life in the rhythmic fragments move within the me they say to me in their awakening you and the world you live in or but a grain of sand upon the infinite shore of an infinite sea and in my dream i say to them i am the infinite sea and all the words are but grains of sand upon my shore only once i have been made mute it was when a man asked me who are you the first thought of god was an angel and first thought of god was a man fluttering wandering longing creatures a thousand thousand years before the sea and wind in the forest gave us words now he can he express the ancient of days in which with only the sounds of our yesterdays the sphinx spoke only once and the sphinx said a grain of sand is a desert and desert is a grain of sand and now let's all be silent again i heard the sphinx but i did not understand i saw the face of a woman and beheld all the children not yet born 
and the woman looked upon my face and she know all my forefathers did before she was born so would i fulfill myself but how shall i unless i became a planet with intelligent life dwelling upon it is it not this every man's goal a pearl is a temple built by pune around a grain of sand what longing built our bodies and what around grains when god threw me a pebble into this wondrous lake i disturbed its surface with countless circles but when i reached the depth i became very still the silence and i will out there the night again birth when my soul and my body loved one another and were married once i know a man whose ears were exceedingly keen but he was a dumb he had lost his tongue in a battle i know what battles that man fought before the great silence came and i am glad he is dead the world is not large enough for two of us did i lie in the dust of egypt silence and unaware of the seasons then the sun gave me birth and i rose and walked upon the banks of the nile singing with the days and dreaming with the night and now the sun treads upon me with a thousand feet that i may lie again in the dust of egypt but behold a marvel and a riddle the very sun that gathered me cannot scatter me still erect am i and sure of foot do i walk upon the banks of nile remembrance is a form of meeting forgetfulness is a form of freedom time according to the movement of the countless suns and they measure time by little missions in their little pockets tell me how we can even ever meet at the same place at the same time space is not space between the earth and the sun to one who looks down from the windows of the milky way eternity is a river of light running from ex eternity to eternity do not the spirits who dwell in the ether envy man is pain on my way to the holy city i met another pilgrim and asked him is this indeed the way to the holy city he said follow me and you will reach the holy city in a day and a night i followed him when we walked many days and many nights yet we did not reach the holy city and what was to my surprise he became angry with me because he has misled me make me o oh god the prey of lion or you make the rabbit my prey I may not reach the dawn save by the path of the night my house says to me do not leave me for here dwells your past and the road says to me come and follow me for i am your future and i say to both my house and the road i have no past nor i have a future if i stay here this is going to be in my stay saying and if i go there there is a saying in my going only love and death change all things how can i lose faith in the justice of life when the dreams of those who sleep upon feathers are not more beautiful than the dreams of those who sleep upon the earth which the desire for certain pleasure is a part of my pain times have i despised my soul the first time when i saw her being meek that she might attain height the second time when i saw her limping before the crippled the third time when she has given to choose between the hard and the easy and she chose the easy the fourth time when she committed a wrong and comforted herself that others also commit wrong the fifth time when she forbore for weakness and attributed her patience to her strength the sixth time when she despised the ugliness of her face and know that that is was one of her own marks and the seventh time when she sang a song of praise and deemed it as a virtue ignorant of absolute truth but i am humble before my ignorance and therein lies my honor and my reward there is a space between man's imaginations and man's attainment that may only be traversed by his longing paradise is there behind the door in the next room but i have lost the key perhaps i have only mislaid it
are blind and I am deaf and dumb, so let us touch hands and understand. The significance of a man is not in what he attains, but rather in what he longs to attain. Some of us are like ink and some of us like paper. And if it were not of the blackness of some of us, some of us would be dumb. And if it were not for the whiteness of some of us, some of us would be blind. And I will give you a voice. Our mind is a sponge, our heart is a stream. It is not things that most of us choose, sucking rather than running. When you long for blessings that you may not name, and when you grieve, knowing not the cause, then indeed you are growing with all the things that grow and raising towards your greater self. When one is drunk with a vision, he deems his faint expression of it the very wine. You are drink wine that you may be in the intoxicated, and I drink that it may be sober for me from that other wine. When my cup is empty, I resign myself to its emptiness, but when it is half full, I resent its half fullness. The reality of other person is not in what he reveals to you, but in what he cannot reveal to you. Therefore, if you would understand him, listen not to what he says, but rather to what he does not say. Half of what I say is meaningless, but I say it so the other half may reach you. A sense of humor is a sense of proportion. My loneliness was born when men praise my talkative faults and blame my silent virtues. not find a singer to sing her heart, she produces a philosopher to speak her mind. The truth is to be known, always to be uttered sometimes. The real in us is silent, that why it is talkative. The voice of life in me cannot reach the ear of the life in you, but let us talk that we may not feel lonely. When two women try to talk, they say nothing. When one woman speaks, she reveals all of life. Frogs may bellow louder than bulls, but they cannot drag the plow in the field, nor turn the wheel of the wine press, and of their skins you cannot make the shoes. Only the dumb can envy the talkative. If winter should say, spring is in my heart, who would believe winter? Every seed is longing. Should you really open your eyes and see, you would uh, behold your image in all images, and should you open your ears and listen, you would hear your own voice in all the voices. It takes two of us to discover truth, one to utter it and another to understand it. Though the wave of words is forever upon us, yet our depth is forever silent. Many a doctrine is like a window pane, we see the truth through it, but it divides us from the truth. Let us play hide and seek. Should you hide in my heart, it would not be difficult to find you. But should you hide behind your own shell, then it would be unless for anyone to seek you. And may wheel her face with a smile. Noble is the sad heart who would sing a joyous song with joyous heart. He who would understand a woman or dissect genius or solve the mystery of silence is the very man who would wake up from a beautiful dream to sit at a breakfast table. I would walk with all those who walk. I would not stand still to watch the procession passing by. You owe more gold to him who serves you. Give him of your heart or serve him. Nay, we have not lived in vain. Have they not built towers of our bones? Let us not be particular and sectional. The poet's mind and the scorpion's tail raise in the glory from the same earth. Every dragon gives birth to a St. George who slays it. Or the poems that the earth writes upon the sky. We fill them down and turn them into paper and we may not record our emptiness. Should you care to write and only the saints know why you should, you must need have knowledge and art and magic, the knowledge of music of words, the art of being artless, and the magic of loving your readers. 
They dip their pens in our heart and think they are inspired. Should a tree write its autobiography, it would not be unlike the history of a race. If I were chosen between the power of writing a poem and the ecstasy of a poem unwritten, I would choose the ecstasy. It is better poetry. But you and all my neighbors agree that I always choose badly. Poetry is not an opinion expressed. It is a song that raises from the bleeding wound or, or a smiling mouth. Birds are timeless. You should utter them or write them with the knowledge of their timelessness. A poet is a dethroned king sitting among the ashes of his palace, trying to fashion an image out of the ashes. Poetry is a deal of joy and pain and wonder with a dash of the dictionary. In vain shall a poet seek the mother of the songs of his heart. Once I said to a poet, he shall not know your word until you die. And he answered saying, yes, death is always the revealer. And if indeed you would know my words, it is I have more in my heart than upon my tongue, and more in my desire than in my hand. If you sing of beauty, Though alone in the heart of a desert, you will have an audience. Poetry is wisdom that enchants the heart. Wisdom is a poetry that sings in the mind. If he could enchant man's heart at the same time, sing in his mind, then in truth he would live in the shadow of God. Inspiration will always sing. Inspiration will never explain. We often sing lullabies to our children that we ourselves may sleep. All our words are but crumbs that fall down from the feast of the mind. Singing is always the stumbling stone to poetry. A great singer is he who sings our silences. How can you sing if your mouth be filled with food? How shall your hand be raised in blessing if it is filled with gold? They say the night angle praises his bosom with a thorn, and when he sings his love song, so do we all. How well should we sing? Genius is but a robin's song at the beginning of a slow spring. Even the most winged spirit cannot escape physical necessity. A madman is not less a musician than you or myself. Only the instrument on which he plays is a little out of tune. A song that lies silent in the heart of a mother sings upon the lips of a child. No longing remains unfulfilled. I never agreed with my other self wholly. The truth of the matter seems to lie between us. Your other self is always sorry for you, but your other self grows on sorrow, so all is well. There is no struggle of soul and body, save in minds of those whose soul are asleep and whose body are out of tune. When you reach the heart of the life, you shall find beauty in all things, even in the eyes that are blind to beauty. We live only to discover beauty. All else is a form of waiting. Sow a seed and the earth will yield you a flower. Dream your dream to the sky and it will bring you your beloved. The devil died the very day you were born. Now you do not have to go through the hell to meet an angel. Many a woman borrows a man's heart. Very few could possess it. If you would possess, you must not claim man touches the hand of a woman, they both touch the heart of eternity. Love is the wheel between the love, uh, lover and lover. Every man loves two women. The one is the creation of his imagination and the other is not at born. Men who do not forgive women their little faults will never enjoy their great virtues. Love that does not renew itself every day becomes a habit and in turn to be a slavery. Lovers embrace that which is between them rather than each other. Love and doubt have never been on speaking terms. Love is a word of light written by a hand of light upon a page of light. Friendship is always a sweet responsibility, never an opportunity. If you do not understand your friends under all conditions, you will never understand him. Your most radiant garment is of the other person's weaving. Your most slavier, savory meal is that which you eat at other person's table. Your most comfortable bed is in the other person's house. 
Now tell me, how can you separate yourself from the other person? Your mind and my heart will never agree until your mind sees us to live in the numbers and my heart in the mist. We shall never understand one another until we reduce the language to seven words. How shall my heart be answered unless it is broken? Only great sorrow or great joy can reveal your truth. If you would be revealed, you must either dance naked in the sun or carry your cross. Should nature heed what we say of contentment, no river would seek the sea and no winter would turn to spring. Should see heed all of we say of thrift, how many of us would be breathing this air? You see, but the shadow when you turn your back to the sun, you are free before the sun of the day and free before the stars of the night. And you are free when there is no sun and no moon and no star. You are ever free when you close your eyes upon all there is, but you are slave to him whom you love because you love him and a slave to him who loves you because he loves you. Welcome to Aircraft's YouTube channel, your world for information. Hey all, how are you? This is Aark. And the topic is Khalil Gibran Sand and Boom Part 2. If you haven't watched Part 1, please do watch. Uh, thanks for all your continued support. And uh, those who haven't, please check my videos. If you like, subscribe and share. Only great sorrow or great joy can reveal your truth. If you would be revealed, you must either ban naked in the sun or carry your cross should nature heed what we say of contentment no river would seek the sea and no winter would turn to spring should she heed all we say of thrift how many of us would be greeting this air you see but your shadow when you turn your back to the sun you are free before the sun of the day and free before the stars of the night and you are free when there is no sun and no moon and no star you are even free when you close your eyes upon all there is but you are a slave to him whom you love because you love him and a slave to him who loves you because he loves you we are all beggars at the gate of the temple and each one of us receives a share of bounty of the king when he enters the temple and we, then he gets out. But we are all jealous of one another. It's just another way of belittling the king. You cannot consume beyond your appetite. The other half of the loaf belongs to the other person and there should remain a little bread for the chance guests. We were not for guests. All house would be grazed, said a gracious wolf to a simple sheep. Will you not honor our house with a visit? And the sheep answered, We would have been honored to visit your house if it were not in your stomach. I stopped my guest on the threshold and said, Nay, wipe not your feet as you enter, but as you go out. Generosity is not in giving me that what I need more than you do, but it is in giving me that which you need more than I do. You are indeed charitable when you give, and while giving, turn your face away so that you may not see the shyness of the receiver. 
the difference between the richest man and the poorest is but a day of hunger and a day a hour of thirst we often borrow from our tomorrow to pay our debts to our yesterdays i am too i am visited by angels and devils but i get rid of them when it is an angel i pray an old prayer and he is bored when it is a devil i commit an old sin and he passes me by after all this is not a bad prison but i do not like this wall between my cell and the next prisoner's cell yet i assure you that i do not wish to reproach the warner nor the builder of the prison those who give you a serpent when you ask for a fish may have nothing but a serpent to give it is then generosity on their part trickery such feet sometimes but it always commits suicide you are truly a forgiver when you forgive murder who never spill blood thieves who never steal and liars who who utter no falsehood he who can put a finger upon that which divides good from the evil if he who can touch the very hem of the garment of the god if your heart is a volcano how shall you expect flowers to bloom in your hands a strange form of self indulgence there are times when i would be wronged and cheated that i may laugh at the expense of those who think i do not know i am being wronged and cheated what shall i say of him who is the pursuer playing the part of the pursued let him who wipes his soiled hands with your garment take your garment he may need it again surely you would not it is a pity that money changers cannot be good gardeners please do not wait wash your inner and faults with your acquired virtues i would have all the faults they are like my own how often i attributed to myself i have never committed so that the other person may feel comfortable in my presence even the mask of the lies or mask of the deep mystery you may judge others only according to your knowledge of yourself tell me now who among us is guilty and who is unguilty the truly just is he who feels half guilty of your misdeeds only an idiot and a genius break man made laws and they are the nearest to the heart of god it is only when you are pursued that you are you become swift i have no enemies oh god but if i have to have an enemy let the strength be equal to mine the truth alone may be the victor you will be quite friendly with your enemy when you both die perhaps a man may commit suicide in self defense long ago there lived a man who was crucified for being too loving and too lovable and strange to relate i met him thrice yesterday the first time he was asking a policeman not to take a prostitute to the prison the second time he was drinking wine with an outcast and the third time he was his fighting with a promoter inside a church all they say of good and evil were true when my life is but one long crime pity is but half justice only one who has been unjust to me is the one to whose brother i have been unjust when you see a man lead to a prison say in your heart may have to be escaping from a narrow prison and when you see a man drunk and say in your heart may have he sought escape from something still more undutiful often times i have waited in self defense but if i were stronger i would not have used such a weapon how stupid is he who would patch the hatred in his eyes with the smile of his lips those beneath me 
can envy or hate me. I have never been envied nor hated. I am above no one. Only those above me can praise or belittle me. I have never been praised nor belittled. I am below no one. You are saying to me, I do not understand you. In praise beyond my words and an insult that you do not deserve. How mean am I when life gives me gold and I give you silver, and yet I down myself generous. When you reach the heart of life, you will find yourself not higher than the salon and not lower than the prophet. Strange that you should not pity the slow-footed and not the slow-minded and the blind-eyed rather than the blind-hearted. It is wiser for the lame not to break his riches upon the head of his enemy. How blind is he who gives you out of his pocket that he may not have to take off your heart. Life is a procession. The slow of foot find it too swift and he steps out and the swift of foot find it too slow and he too steps out. If there is such a thing as sin, some of us commit it backward following our forefathers' footsteps and some of us commit it forward by overruling our children. The truly good is he who is one with all those who are deemed bad. We are all prisoners, but some of us are in cells without windows and some with windows. Strange that we all defend our wrongs with more vigor than do we do for our rights. Should we all confess for our sins to one another, we would all laugh at one another for our lack of originality. Should we all reveal our virtues, we would also laugh at the same cause. An individual is above man-made laws until he commits a crime against man-made conventions. After that, he is neither above anyone nor lower than anyone. Government is an agreement between you and myself. You and myself are often wrong. Crime is another name for need or an aspect of a disease. Is there a greater fault than being conscious of the other person's fault? If the other person laughs at you, you can pity him. But if you laugh at him, you may never forgive yourself. If the other person injures you, you may forget the injury. But if you injure him, you will always remember. In truth, the other person is your most sensitive cell, gives another body. How heedless you are in your mind when you would have men fly with your wings and you cannot even give them a feather. Once a man sat at my board and ate my bread and drank my wine and went away laughing at me. Then he came again for bread and wine and I spurned him and the angels laughed at me. Hate is a dead thing. Who of you would be at home? It is the honor of the murder that he is not the murderer. The tribune of humanity is in its silent heart, never its talkative mind. They deem me mad because I will not see all my days for gold. And I deem them mad because they think my days have a price. They spread before us the riches of gold and silver, of ivory and ebony, and we spread before them our hearts and our spirits, and yet they deem themselves the host and thus the guest. I would be the least among men with dreams and the desire to fulfill dreams rather than the greatest with no dreams and no desires.
the most pitiful among men is he who turns his dream into silver and gold we are all climbing towards the summit of our heart's desire should the other climber steal your sack and your purse and wax fat on the one and heavy on the other you should pity him the climbing will be harder for his flesh and the burden will make his way longer and you should in your leanness see his flesh puffing upward help him a step it will add to your swiftness you cannot judge any man beyond your knowledge of him and how small is your knowledge not listen to a conqueror's preaching to the conquered the truly chaste man is he who bears the load of the bond slave patiently a thousand years ago my neighbor said to me i hate life for it is not but a thing of pain and yesterday i passed by a cemetery and saw life dancing upon its grave strife in nature is but disorder longing for order solitude is a silent storm that breaks down all our dead branches yet it sends our living roots deeper into the living heart of the living earth once i spoke to the sea to a brook and the brook taught me but an imaginative exaggerator and once i spoke of a brook to the sea and the sea taught me but a depreciative defamer how narrow is the vision that exalts the beginners of the ant above the singing of the grasshopper the highest virtue here may be the least in another world the deep and the high go to the depth or to the high in a straight line only the spacious can move in circles if it were not for our conception of weights and measures we would stand in awe of fireflies as we do before the sun a scientist without imagination is a butcher with dull knives and outworn skills but what would you since we are all not vegetarians when you sing the hungry hears you with a smirk death is not nearer to the aged than to the newborn neither is life if indeed you must be candid be candid beautifully otherwise keep silent for there is a man in our neighborhood who is dying may have a funeral among men is a wedding feast among the angels a forgotten reality may die and leave in its will 7000 actualities and facts to be spent in funeral and the building of a tomb in truth we talk only to ourselves but sometimes we talk loud enough that others may hear us the obvious is that it is never seen until someone expresses it simply if the milky way had not within me how should i have seen it or known it unless i am a physician among physicians that would not believe that i am an astronomer perhaps the sea definition of a shell is the pearl perhaps science definition of coal is a diamond fame is the shadow of passion standing in the light a root is a flower that disdains pain there is neither religion nor science beyond beauty pre great man i have heard known had something small in his makeup and it was the small something which prevented inactivity or madness or suicide the truly great man is he who would master no one and who would not be mastered by none i would not believe the man in a media that simply because he kills the criminals and the prophets tolerance is low sick with the sickness of haughtiness comes will turn 
but it is not strange that even elephants will need a disagreement. Maybe the shortest cut between two minds. In the flame, and I am the dry brush, and one part of me consumes the other part. We are all seeking the summit of the holy mountain, but shall not the road between be shorter if we consider the past of a chart and not a guide? Wisdom ceases to be wisdom when it becomes too proud to weep, too grave to laugh, and too sinful to seek other than itself. Had I filled myself with all that you know, what room should I have for that you do not know? I have learned silence from the talkative, toleration from the intolerant, and kindness from the unkind. Yet strange, I am ungrateful to be teachers. A bigot is a stone deaf creator. The silence of the envious is too noisy. When you reach the end of what you should know, you will be at the beginning of what you should sense. An exaggeration is a truth that has lost its temper. If you can see only what light travels and hear only what sound announces, then in truth you do not see not do you hear a fact the truth unsexed not laugh and be unkind at the same time the nearest to my heart are a king without a kingdom and the poor man who does not know how to beg a shy failure is nobler than an immodern success dig anywhere in the earth and you will find a treasure. Only you must dig within the faith of a peasant. Said the hunted fox, followed by twenty horsemen and the pack of twenty hounds. Of course, they will kill me, but how poor and how stupid they must be. Surely it would not be worth while for twenty foxes riding on twenty asses and accomplished by twenty wolves. To chase and kill one man. It is the mind in us that yields to the laws made by us, but never the spirit in us. A traveler, I am, and a navigator, and every day I discover new region within my soul. A woman protested, saying, Of course, it was a righteous war. My cell, son, fell in it. I said to life, I would hear death speak. And life raised their voice a little higher and said, You hear him now. When you have solved all the mysteries of life, you long for death, for it is but another mystery of life. Birth and death are two noblest expressions of bravery. My friend, you and I shall remain strangers unto life and unto one another, and each unto himself, until the day you shall speak and I shall listen. Give me your voice, my own voice, and then I shall stand before you, thinking myself standing before a mirror. They say to me, should you know yourself, you would know all men, and I say, then only when I seek all men shall I know myself. Men is two men, one is awake in darkness and another is asleep in light. A hermit is one who renounces the world of fragments that he may enjoy the world wholly and without interruption. There lies a green field between the scholar and the poet. Should the scholar cross it, he becomes a wise man. Should the poet cross it, he becomes a prophet. Yesterday, I saw philosophers in the marketplace carrying their heads in baskets and praying aloud, Wisdom, wisdom for sale. Poor philosophers, they must need sell their heads to feed their hearts. Said a philosopher to a street sweeper, 
I pity you. You are to the hard and dust dirty task. And the sweet sweeper said, Thank you, sir, but tell me what is your task? And the philosopher the answered, See, I study man's mind, his deeds, and his desires. Then the street sweeper went on with his sweeping and said with a smile, I pity you too. He who listens to the truth is not less than he who utters truth. No man can draw the line between necessities and luxuries. Only the angels can do that, and the angels are wise and wishful. Perhaps the angels of her best, better thoughts in space. The true prince who finds his throne in the heart of the dervish. Generosity is giving more than you can, and pride is taking less than you need. In truth, you are not to say any man, you owe all to all men. All those who have lived in the past live with us now. Surely none of us would be ungracious host. He who longs the most lives the longest. They say to me, a bird in hand is worth ten in the bush. But I say, a bird and a feather in the bush is worth more than ten birds in the hand. You are seeking after that feather is life. With winged feet, may it is life itself. There are only two elements here, beauty and truth. Beauty in the hearts of lovers, and truth in the arms of tillers of the soil. Great beauty captures me, but a beauty still greater freezes me, even from itself. Beauty shines brighter in the heart of him who longs for it, than in the eyes of him who sees it. Admire the man who reveals his mind to me. I honor him who unveils his dreams. But why am I so shy and even a little ashamed before him who serves me? The gifted were once proud in serving princes. Now they claim honor in serving horses, paupers. The angels know that too many practical men eat their bread with the sweat of the dreamers broke. Wit is often a mask. If you can hear it, you would find either a genius irritated or a cleverness juggling. The understanding attributes to me, understanding and the dull dullness. I think they are both right. Only those with the secrets in their hearts could divine the secrets in our hearts. He who would share your pleasure, but not your pain, shall lose the key to one of the seven gates of paradise. Yes, there is nirvana. It is in leading of your sheep to a green pasture, and putting your child to sleep, and in writing the last line of your poem. Choose our joys and our sorrows long before we experience them. Sadness is but a wall within the two gardens. When either your joy or your sorrow becomes great, the world becomes small. Desire is half of life, indifference is half of death. The bitterest thing in our today's sorrow is the memory of our yesterday's joy. I hope you had a good time listening to the Sand and Foam Part 2 of Khalil Gibran. Hope to see you with more such videos in the future. If you like, please give me a big thumbs up and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching. Heart signing off. Bye bye. Take care.